And you can't write these stories. That's why at night I sit there sometimes and I'm like, when are they going to knock on my door? When is the fucking knock going to come with the DEA or the FBI or somebody, somebody? Because it never fucking ends. I think of this shit and I'm like, I got to go to church on Sunday. When do I go to church every Sunday? I think I go to church because I want to fucking go to church at 7.30 and see the priest and the fucking animals. No. I go because hopefully they'll forgive me for all the... And I didn't do nothing bad. Listen, I never killed nobody. I wanted to. I almost killed my ex-wife's husband when she started fucking with the kid and stuff. And I had friends in Boulder that... Let me tell you something about life. You know, I'm telling you stories here and we're fucking around. You know, I was a low-level fucking thief. No big deal. But in life sometimes, you meet people that are serious. And that's why I always tell people, you got to be fucking serious. I had a godfather. You know the guy that baptizes you and fucking when you're born? I love my godfather. His name was Gabby. He raised me kind of sort of. He would come pick me up on the weekends to take me to movies. He showed me a gun. At a cl- he took me to see Dirty Harry. And at the end of Dirty Harry, he took me to eat and he showed me a 44 Magnum. He put it on my fucking lap in the car. And I'm like, you're a bad motherfucker. <laughs> I mean, I love Gabby. When someone, when you're a kid and somebody shows you a gun, you love that fucking man. He was my godfather. His mother, they stood there. And after my mother died, I would see him from time to time and he'd give me money, but then he disappeared. And he disappeared for a couple of years, you know? And I always knew Gabby was a serious guy. And one day I'm hanging out in West New York and this motherfucker shows up. And he's like, how you doing? And I'm like, where the fuck you been, bro? I really need you. You know, I really need, I really did. I need, my stepfather and me didn't get along and I was kind of pissed at him. So. He goes, meet me tomorrow. Let's go buy you some clothes. He bought me a jacket and all this shit. And I'm telling him my situation. And he's like, listen, I got a wife. I really can't help you. And that destroyed my insides. I, I was so hurt. So he's like, the only thing I could do is I sell Coke. I could give you a couple ounces a week to sell, you know? And I go, all right, fuck it. So I start fronting half ounces and selling them and bringing them back the money. But I was going to set them up. I was going to get them up to like a pound and then never come back. So I kept working them, working and I'm telling him, I'm like, dog, I could sell a lot of Coke. I could sell a lot of Coke. And he's like, just sell what it's in front of you. So finally, one day I get him for a quarter pound to blow. Halloween weekend, 83 or 84. I go over there and he goes, you got any money? I go, I got a thousand bucks. He goes, take the four ounces. When are you gonna come back? I go, I'll be back tonight. I'm gonna sell them all in one chunk. I'll make like 3,000, I'll give you the rest. He says, no problem. There was no reason. I wasn't coming back. I wasn't even thinking of coming back. I took that blow, got in that car, and went out for Halloween. I got fucked up. I dressed up like a caveman, and I was giving out bumps to people and shit. I was fucked up. I stayed up Saturday night, I stayed up Sunday, and I stayed up Monday. Just snorting coke in a hotel with another chick who was dressed up as a cave woman. And we were just snorting fucking coke. We, we never, ooh, ee, ooh, ee, ooh. So finally she leaves like Tuesday morning. I hadn't eaten. I look in the stash, there's maybe like a couple rocks and some powder. Four fucking ounces. I'm like, fuck. And I look at my pocket, I got like $100 cash. I'm like, oh my God, what did I do? So I'm walking on Kennedy Boulevard. I go, I got to get some nourishment. It's been three fucking days. I can feel my bones. I walk over and I, and I hear, rawr, 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 rawr. And I'm like, what the fuck? And all of a sudden I turn around the sidewalk and it's a motorcycle on the sidewalk. And he flips the mask up and it's my fucking godfather. This guy's 60. <laughs> I'm like a 750 with a helmet that, you know, like, and he's on, like, on, one, on one of those rockets, like one of those things. And he's like, where's my money? And I'm like, dog, you're not going to believe it. He's like, listen, I need my money. I'm like, I don't have it. And he goes, I need this money today. We're going to have a problem. And I'm like, I don't fucking have it. And I just start walking. And he starts chasing me with the bike. And I start running. And I run through a fucking rose petal thing. And I got a thousand thorns in me, right? Like a thousand. That was payback. My friend with the fucking cat, that was payback, you know? So uh, I run and I go into this deli, Hashways, and he comes up with the motorcycle. And he goes in and, he, and Hashways, like, I'm going to call the police. And he's like, I just got to talk to my godson. And he goes, dog, I need that fucking money. He goes, you came to me like a man. I gave you the fucking thing. And, and, I, and I'm like, fuck you, you know? Where were you when I needed you as a kid, you know? Fuck you, bitch. Again, I wasn't claiming responsibility. I never seen the motherfucker after that. Never seen him. That was uh, October of 84 or something like that. I fall and I do a phony law insurance thing with this guy, Silo. And I got 18 fucking grand. Yeah, Silo, that's all he did. He went around every day looking for people to sue. If you needed money right away, he'd take you to a, uh, a supermarket and you'd drop over pickle juice and you'd slip. 
And then once they come over, you say, did I pass out? That's $100,000 right there. <laughs> so, I mean, that's how many hustles we had going on. So, whatever you needed, like, Cy, I need 300000 Let's cut your finger off. You know what I'm saying? Like, Cy, <laughs> what, are you kidding me? You get like a half a mil per finger. Fuck it, cut both off. You get a million dollars. I mean, you, I got a friend who got 300 Gs just for a toe. You know, he always had things like that. And you're like, Cy, come on. I just want a little bit of money, and I got 18 grand. And I had gotten the check that Friday. Listen to this. And that Sunday, I'm flying out. That fucking Sunday, I'm flying out of Newark. And I take a bus from 88th Street to like 51st Street so my buddy could give me a fucking plane ride, a car a ride to the airport. And I'm sitting there waiting for the bus with my luggage. He pulls up with the motorcycle. <laughs> and he pops his mask and he goes, you never gave me that money. He goes, we're straight. I don't want the money. He goes, all I'm going to tell you is the next time I see you, I'm going to put three bullets in you. He goes, I already talked to your stepdad. I talked to your uncle in California. I'm shooting you, just so you fucking know. And I was like, fuck this. <laughs> this motherfucker don't know I'm getting on a fucking plane right now. He'll be driving around for fucking days. And that's, you know, it's those little situations that it was all a joke for a long time. Ha ha, he he. But that's why I always tell people, you better think before you get yourself... Like I said, I was a regular guy, just fucking minding my business, getting high, you know, and all of a sudden I'm kidnapping somebody. This is how fucking fast it creeps up on you. You know, I've heard the stories of people getting in a fucking car, going for a ride, and somebody shoots somebody, and there's your fucking life. You know, when you go to prison, you meet kids that go out, drink and drive, and they fucking hit somebody. And these are nice kids with jobs, 100 grand. They're doing fucking 10 years. So it's amazing how fast your life could change over a crime, but it's not your life changing is what you get from that change. You know, prison was a shock to me. I always knew I was gonna end up in prison. I'm not gonna deny it. But I didn't know it was gonna make me a, a stand-up comic. So by fucking up, something good came out of it. You know what I'm saying? So when you listen to these stories, please don't judge me. It's just something I went through. Some women suck dick, some guys experiment being gay, whatever, <laughs> you know. This was my experimentation, and you know what? You listen to it, and you're like, this is pretty bad, Joey. But in the long run, it may be a better man. Thank you very much for coming out here. Man.